Hello everybody, my name is uh, Vincenzo Cerullo and uh, I will be talking to you today about uh, uh, what we do in the lab and uh, the title of my seminar will be Dressing up viruses to full cancer, a fast pipeline for precision oncolytic immunotherapy. Now, as I said, my name is Pins. Uh, uh, I'm a professor in biological drug development. I'm a head of the drug research program at the University of Helsinki. Uh, I'm also a, a group leader of uh, Immunobiotherapy Lab, IBT Lab. Uh, some highlight of uh, our lab, we, have, uh, uh, we started uh, around nine years ago. In these nine years, we have been awarded the three year grants. We have founded a spin-off company, we have licensed five technologies, and we have uh, uh, filed around 19 patent families. Uh, we are also very engaged in science dissemination, and we have participated, uh, 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 myself and, and lab members have participated in several different uh, uh, events like TEDx, Slash, Slash Y Science, and so on and so forth. I'm personally also, as I said, co-founder of a company called Valotherapeutics, which is part of my disclaimer together with the other one. Now, as I said uh, uh, before, today I would like to talk about what we do in the lab and what we do in the lab is developing personalized cancer vaccines. Now, what do we need to develop personalized cancer vaccines? Well, we need three basic elements. We uh, need a pipeline to actually have access to human tumors and to test the efficacy of our personalized vaccine on directly on human tumors. We need a second pipeline that allow us to rapidly discover and identify tumor specific antigens and third we need a platforms to deliver these antigens basically to generate to formulate the cancer the therapeutic cancer vaccines now i will be giving you some example of each one of these three elements and then i will tell you why we came up with the solution of using advanced imaging to actually solve what I believe is the biggest problem in the field of personalized therapeutic cancer vaccines. I will start from this uh, uh, for the platform development, so which is basically a way to deliver tumor specific antigens and a way to generate an immune response against those antigens. As starting building blocks in our uh, uh, platform development pipeline, we use oncolytic viruses. Oncolytic viruses are viruses that can uh, infect, replicate, and kill cancer cells in a direct way. So basically, by infecting, replicating, and lysing the, the, the cancer. But simultaneously, they have also a second mode of action which is immunotherapy based. So viruses are very good at uh, activating antigen presenting cells directly in the tumor microenvironment. Once those antigen presenting cells are activated, they can pick up tumor antigens within the tumor and they can present those tumor antigens to naive T cells and generate an anti-tumor immune response. Now, in a clinical trial, uh, which was done a few years ago, you can actually appreciate how massive is the T cell response, that the T cell that are actually recruited at the tumor after the uh, uh, virus administration. And in fact, here you can see in this example, an ovarian cancer and a mesothelioma before the treatment and after the treatment, where in brown, you can appreciate the, the a uh, strong influx of T cells going to the tomb. But the reality is that the majority of those T cells in human, but also in urine models, are actually antiviral T cells. So they are going there because there is a virus in the tumor and they want to clear the virus. And a very small percentage of those cells are indeed uh, anti-tumor uh, uh, 
T cell. Now, how can we actually uh, 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 make much more of those T cells? So we thought ourselves to decorate viruses with two more specific antigens so that we not only have the direct oncolysis, also we have the uh, activation of the dendritic cells, but this time because the virus is decorated with the two more antigens, the majority of the antigens that those dendritic cells will present to a uh, naive T cell will be actually coming from the tumor and not from the, not from the virus. So we will generate much stronger T cell response. We will go from this situation to this hypothetical situation. Based on this idea, we developed our first, uh, uh, our first uh, pr um, um, product, let's call it this way, or, or biological drug, which we call uh, Pepticrad. Pepticrad is an oncolytic adenovirus genetically modify, modified to, uh, to, to, to boost the immune system. But most importantly, this oncolytic adenovirus is decorated with two more specific antigens in order to boost the uh, uh, two more specific T cell response rather than the uh, virus specific T cell response. In addition to this one, we have also uh, uh, um, developed different kind, different other platforms, which are not only based on adenovirus, as you can see here, which we call it Pepticrad. We have also developed platforms which are based on enveloped uh, uh, viruses using a herpes and vaccine virus or approved vaccines. We call it Peptiemb. Uh, we have also uh, applied this technology to bacteria, like for instance, BCG, I'll give you an example later. We call it Peptibac. And we have gone even further by utilizing a membrane of the tumor cells to generate uh, 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 artificially, um, uh, artificial um, uh, enveloped uh, 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 to Oncoli to unenveloped viruses, and we call it extra grad. I'll give you the first example, which was developed by Christian Capasso, who was a PhD student in, in our lab, where we have actually taken a naked oncolytic adenovirus coated with tumor specific peptides and test the efficacy of this product. Here we have a, a melanoma tumors that is also presenting a specific. Uh, let's call it tumor antigens, and we compare uh, uh, a virus with the same virus decorated with these tumor antigens. Now, as you can see here, you have the tumor growth over time. You see that the tumor in untreated animal is growing. The tumor when in the animal treated with the control virus is growing a little bit less than untreated. When the tumor is treated with a control virus plus the peptides, you can see that it's a little bit better than virus alone, but not significantly better than virus alone. But when we mix this virus with this amount of peptides in the same concentration of virus, same concentration of peptides, but we mix it together before the administration with my, or to the mice, we went from this situation to this situation. Basically, the mice completely rejected the tumor. And when we looked at the, the tumor specific T cell response, you can appreciate that there was almost one log increase in this uh, uh, tumor specific T cell response. So another example is with enveloped viruses. We have applied also this one to enveloped viruses like vaccine and herpes virus done by Ercoilos Maghe postdoc in the lab. Here, as you can see, we, uh, uh, we, here you have vaccine virus here and the herpes virus here. We went from around 14% uh, of tumor control in naked vaccine up to 71% of tumor control in the same vaccine coated with tumor specific peptides. Same also for herpes, we went from 12% of tumor control up to 28, almost 30% of tumor control when the, uh, the vaccine, when the herpes is coated with tumor specific antigens. When we looked at the, the increase of tumor specific antigen, as you can see, you have a significantly increase of the naked virus in both 
for herpes virus and for vaccine virus. So by coating the virus with peptides, we are actually stimulating a tumor-specific immune response, and this tumor-specific immune response is actually helping the, 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 the virus fighting the tumor. As I said, we have uh, also applied this technology to bacteria. Uh, uh, and in particular, here in this example, we use BCG. As you can see, this is a BCG together with checkpoint inhibitor anti pdl one You have a, a, a around 20% success rate in tumor control here. And we go up to 70% in the same setting when the BCG is actually coated with tumor-specific peptides. Once again, when we looked at the uh, uh, peptide-specific T cell response, you can see a significantly increase in the group of uh, animals treated with, uh, with, with the coated BCG. And as I said, we have also uh, 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 done something a little bit more sophisticated where we have taken uh, uh, membrane, uh, membrane loaded with tumor antigens directly from, from, from tumors and we have uh, uh, built up artificial envelopes around viruses that are unenveloped. And uh, we call this technology Peptigrad, was developed by Mario Fuschel, a PhD student in the lab, and we have uh, also uh, published uh, a couple of papers about this technology. Now, uh, hopefully I am convinced in this first part and uh, that uh, basically if you take a good adjuvant like oncolytic viruses are and you coat this adjuvant with the two more specific antigens, you can actually combine the strength of this uh, adjuvant of viruses with the precision of, uh, of, of peptides in targeting and in, in stimulating uh, a specific T cell response. So hopefully now you are convinced that this is a good technology to actually generate this, uh, this, this, this response. But the, the, the second thing that uh, we need in order to formulate our personalized drug is, uh, is actually what are those tumor antigens? So where do we take those specific tumor antigens? In, uh, uh, which will be basically this second element I was, that I was discussing before. Now to do that, Basically, you actually really need to look what the tumor is actually presenting on MHC class 1 or human HLA so that an effector T cell can recognize it and can actually kill the, 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 uh, the, uh, the, the, the cancer cell. In particular, this part uh, uh, in the lab is mainly led by postdoc Sara Feola and Jacopo Chiaro, a PhD student. So we have developed uh, 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 technologies to actually uh, um, study the immunopeptidomics. So all the peptides that the tumor is presenting on MHC class one, we do it in two different way. A classical approach, which is a little bit uh, 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 longer time, a little bit more tedious, but uh, uh, um, and it requires large amount of tumors. To avoid and to overcome the need of a large amount of large amount of starting material, we have also developed uh, our proprietary technology called PeptiChip that probably you can actually probably see in my hand, where uh, um, the same protocol is actually applied in a small microfluidic chip, and the chip is actually taking all the peptides from the tumor and is analyzing it and giving some kind of score on what are the peptides that are uh, um, predicted to be more immunogenic. By utilizing all this, the, the entire uh, pipeline, uh, we can actually really build up personalized cancer immunotherapy. In fact, if you think, for instance, this, this is an example where we have actually applied our pipeline, we have taken an unknown a tumor, uh, we have uh, uh, done uh, the, the ligandome analysis to see what, the, what tumor antigens this tumor is actually presenting on MHC class 1. We have identified and prioritized those tumor antigens. We have formulated the, uh, uh, the specific drug. And once the specific drug is formulated, we have tested in, uh, in syngenic uh, um, tumor model, in, in, in murine tumor model. As you can see here, 
you can see here in blue the mice uh, uh, treated with the saline solution which basically the tumor is just growing and then we have uh, um, here in red a normal oncolytic virus naked in black here you have an oncolytic virus coated with a golden standard tumor antigen for this specific tumor and in green here you have uh, um, a, a, an oncolytic adenovirus coated with uh, one of the tumor antigens that we have discovered in our pipeline as you can see in a very in relatively short time applying our pipeline we were able to formulate a, a therapeutic cancer vaccine specific for this tumor, so a personalized therapeutic cancer vaccine, which was better than the virus naked and then the virus coated with the, the so-called golden standard antigens for this specific tumor. Interest, interestingly, these mice had not only one tumor that was treated, but we also uh, uh, measure the, 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 the tumor that was untreated and as you can see our um, personalized therapy worked much better also on the untreated again highlighting the fact that the T cell that we are generating on these sides are actually migrating also to the other side of the tumor and are actually uh, 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 helping uh, our fighting and killing eventually cancer cells But now the problem. So if you think now everything that I have told you so far, it works, uh, in my opinion, uh, extremely well when it comes to murine tumors. And uh, uh, because we have an easy way to test the efficacy. So we look for these tumor antigens. We load these tumor antigens on the surface of uh, attenuated viruses which retain their uh, adjuvant power and uh, this will create not only oncolysis but will create also a specific uh, tumor antigen t-cell response and this combination works uh, uh, works pretty well but uh, as i said at the beginning uh, this has uh, 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 when we try to translate this to clinic so for treating real cancer patient i mean human patient uh, the problem is that the tumor antigens that we discover they are restricted for the for the you the patient hla and uh, uh, this makes impossible to test those uh, uh, um, personalized therapy in murine model so and that's where actually the field is stuck at the moment. I mean, we do have, we have advanced in all kind of uh, different direction. We know how to discover antigens. We know how to identify and prioritize antigens. We know how to formulate specific drugs that actually work, but we don't know how to test it before going to, 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 to phase one clinical trial. So we need a way to overcome this problem. And uh, one way that we thought that uh, uh, needs to be further developed to overcome this problem is the development of human organoids, and in particular, human immunocomplex organoid. Now, for a lot of different disease, including standard chemotherapy, the simple human organoid is enough to test whether or not a specific drug kill or does kill or does not kill a, a single tumor cells but when it comes to active immunotherapy we need to generate the immune response so we really need to see whether or not the, the, the generated immune response is actually killing the the, the the cancer cells so there is a strong need at the moment to actually develop sophisticated system where we can actually develop uh, immunocomplex organoid basically small tumor that 100% uh, recapitulate the, 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 the human disease together with the human immunosystem 
patient-specific immune system that we can treat with our drugs and actually test whether or not our personalized drug works. In order to do that, I mean, uh, uh, our lab has actually moved to advanced imaging and tried to develop these things to a uh, 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 um, novel protocol to actually test and standardize the personalized cancer vaccine that we are developing. The first thing that we really had to do is to develop a reliable and reproducible way to uh, uh, to titer our viruses. This is extremely important because when a biological drug like viruses are developed, um, contrary to chemical compounds, uh, uh, not every single particle is infective. So not every single particle is active. And uh, uh, different preparation of uh, even of the same viruses might have a different uh, titers and a different efficacy. So we need to know in a very standardized way, which works across laboratories, but also across people that are actually producing the viruses, uh, how effective a single viral prep is. To do this, we have developed an automa a, 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 a automatic protocol that actually counts the real infectivity of a single prep. Uh, uh, of a virus that we have uh, that we have developed and, and automatically can give you uh, basically a given dilution how many cells are actually infected and what is the real titer the real infectivity infective titer of that specific uh, virus this is extremely important not only when we generate a new virus but also when you want to compare a new virus, for instance, you have generated a new virus and you want to know whether or not this is more efficient than the, your previous one, and you need to know exactly what is their title in order to compare. So not only you can use it, uh, you know, to, 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 to compare uh, different preps of, a se of the same virus, but you can also automize, uh, automatize uh, the protocol in order to compare different viral prep of different viruses. And as I said, this is extremely important in order to advance the field and generating more effective viruses. But most important, but another very important thing is that you, we need to develop a reliable uh, system to test the efficacy of those viruses. And uh, to do that, we need to standardize the way we look at uh, uh, human tumor organoids. I mean, human tumor organoids are mini tumor that 100% uh, recapitulate the disease in humans. So they are, we, we checked over time, exon sequencing and all, 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 all kinds of technologies to make sure that the, the tumor organoids remain the same of the original tumor. But nevertheless, when we test our viruses on these um, organoids, we need to make sure that uh, when we have a set of five, six, seven, or 10 different patients, we are actually testing organoids which are uh, reproducible, which basically for every single patient, we uh, infect or we test the efficacy in organoids that are similar. Otherwise, we might have different results. So it is important for us to, uh, to, to develop a reliable and reproducible way to characterize the organoid. And in this, with this example, you can see how we have looked at the organoid size distribution in terms of diameter and in terms of area. And that gives you the, the possibility to collect and infect organoids of different patients that are of the same size. Another important thing, as I said, is uh, looking in the organoids, basically whether or not those viruses are infecting the organoids and how efficient is their replication cycle. For instance, if you take a dome, uh, for this, this is an, and you can, follow, you can follow it over time. If you take, for instance, a dome here, which consists of uh, around 150,000 different organoids, you can infect this dome 
with uh, an oncolytic virus. In this example, is uh, this oncolytic adenovirus expressing red fluorescent protein. And you can actually look at the, inf the infection of the dome over time, on day one, very weak, and then it's increasing on day four. And what is what we have uh, actually developed and, um, uh, and uh, also um, uh, uh, aut automatized is uh, also the, the quantification. So not only we can visually follow the, 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 infe the infection of the virus, but also we can quantify it. And this is all done automatically in, in, in a way that is completely uh, uh, unbiased and reliable, not only across the lab, but also across operators. Another important thing when we infect uh, domes and organoid is actually to look whether or not the, uh, where the virus is actually more uh, um, infecting the cells uh, and in which part of the dome the virus is actually replicating. This can be done again in a very reliable way and also we can uh, actually compare the different margination of the viruses in different tumor samples in different patients so that we can at the end have a very clear and unbiased uh, information on whether or not that specific virus is infecting uh, that specific patient and all this is extremely important for us to advance these technologies to to the clinic what we are actually doing now is uh, 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 working out a protocol that will uh, uh, in vivo over time look at how the patient immune system is actually primed and, uh, uh, and uh, recruited and, uh, and, um, and, uh, and activated against the tumor. So basically we have a patient, we can grow the organoid and we can collect the immune system, both of these will end up in a microfluidic chip and uh, together with our personalized immunological drug and there we can actually follow over time how the T cells are actually going to the tumor and are killing the tumor. This is just an example where you can appreciate here in green the T cells that are actually migrating uh, uh, towards the dome, towards the, 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 the patient's organoid, and they're actually killing it. This is just a static picture, but uh, as I said, we are now working on a protocol to make this automatic over time. This was my last slide. I just want to thank all my uh, uh, group members that have uh, uh, participated in the projects that I have uh, shared with you today. Uh, these are well, basically the same group members, but in real life, here and here. And uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, a big thank also to our collaborators and uh, to our founders that uh, uh, allow uh, the majority of the research that I have uh, uh, sh uh, shared with you today. Thank you very much for your attention and I'll be, I'll be very happy to take your questions.